Here are five key charts that explain how markets typically behave during a recession. Recessions can cause jitters for investors, but for more experienced market hawks, they could also provide opportunity. So we've picked the graphs and the data that could help show you how markets trade as fears rise of a global economic downturn. Copper is often seen as the canary in the coal mine. When the global economy is booming, it needs lots of copper-rich products like cables, phone lines and infrastructure, which keeps the price of copper high. Its price soared from 2006 to 2008 as the world economy enjoyed a big growth cycle. But when copper's price falls rapidly, it's a potential sign that the economy has started contracting. During the financial crash, copper's price plummeted. Now here's the key. Economic red flags start waving when copper falls rapidly with the price of South Korean exports. South Korea's economy is one of the most open in the world and trade accounts for more than half of its GDP. For investors, South Korean exports can indicate the health of global trade. So perhaps it's not surprising that copper, one of the commodities most susceptible to global growth, tracks its direction. Put the price of copper and South Korean exports on the same graph, and you see how tightly linked they are. This means that if you're a copper trader, you might want to keep a careful eye on export momentum in South Korea and it could help traders detect a potential economic downturn. Here at Capital.com, we produce explainers and chart analysis videos on all types of financial markets. You can watch our recent explainer on short selling by clicking up here. When global trade starts slowing, activity in the service sector, which means things like leisure, finance and retail, tends to drop. Change in the yearly US service sector activity is represented by this graph the not so easily named ISM Non-Manufacturing PMI. It does badly during recessions and picks up in good times. So far, so obvious. But we've identified another index that mirrors and at times predicts when and where it's going to move. It's the S&P 500, or US 500, an index of the 500 biggest companies in America. And in this case, we're measuring one year rolling returns. Let's put the data together. As you can see, when the US 500 fell from highs in 2010 and 2021, the ISM did the same shortly after. There's also a key figure that might tell us when a recession has reached the floor. The moment of maximum pessimism arrived in 2009 and 2020, when the US ISM Service Index dropped 12 points from the previous year. Fiscal and monetary stimulus came soon after, which can lead to a stock market recovery. And as you can see, after the fall, the US 500 rebounded. I really like this car. Consumer staples are things we really need, like food, drink and cleaning goods. While consumer discretionaries are things we want, but don't really need, like cars or jewellery. It's the stuff you'll probably only buy with a healthy bank balance. The ratio of staples against discretionary goods tends to rise when financial waters get choppy. You can see how far it rose before and during the 2008 financial crash. And that's because investors are factoring in rising unemployment. They're anticipating that people will have less money in their pockets to spend on non-essential items. Let's put the US unemployment rate on the same graph. Just as the consumer to discretionary sector ratio rose in 2008, US unemployment started climbing. But things were a little different during the COVID shock of 2020. While unemployment soared, the consumer ratio didn't shoot up. And that's because government stepped in with big stimulus packages, so there wasn't as big a hit on personal budgets. However, we can see in 2022 that the ratio has started to rise once again. When staples start outperforming the discretionary sector, it's a sign that consumer confidence could be about to fall which could potentially lead to a recession. Buying gold is less dangerous. He feels safer with his savings in good old-fashioned gold. When economic times get tough, investors have historically flocked to gold. Let's take a look at the relationship between the respective prices of silver and gold. This is known as the silver to gold ratio, which describes how many ounces of gold can be bought with one ounce of silver. This ratio can fall at the beginning of recessions, 
when anxious investors seek out havens like gold. It happened during the pandemic of 2020 and in 2009 during the financial crash. Historically, the silver to gold ratio has been related to a pair of seemingly unrelated currencies, the Australian dollar and the Swiss franc. The Australian economy is heavily exposed to commodities and is highly reactive to global growth. In contrast, the Swiss franc, like gold, is a safe haven and reflects the soundness of the Swiss financial system. So these two ratios are strong indicators of the market's willingness to take risks. The pair fell sharply during the financial crash, but they also fell steadily between 2013 and 2020. There was low inflation, non-exceptional growth, and no commodity boom, and their drop was then accelerated by the COVID shock. So when the Australian-Swiss pair and the silver to gold ratio fall, it shows investors really aren't in the mood to take financial risks. When the price of oil starts to rise, the world sits up and takes notice. Rising oil prices mean gasoline, food and transportation all become expensive. And that causes investors' expectations about future inflation to rise. Market expectations for future inflation in the US are indicated by the so-called US break-even rate. As you can see, the price of oil and the 10-year break-even rate are closely aligned. But oil hates recession. Once a downturn hits, or when economic fears start spreading through the markets, inflation expectations generally collapse and oil prices follow suit. But the price of oil and the break-even rate fell sharply in 2008 and the 2020 COVID-19 crisis. Oil traders might want to keep a close eye on the break-even rate. It could be a crucial barometer of the market's expectations of a global slowdown, which could benefit traders looking to take advantage of falling oil prices. Each recession is distinct, which means the markets behave a little differently during each downturn. In 2022, the world is contending with COVID-disrupted supply chains and a war between Russia and Ukraine. Our analysis provides indications only, and of course, further due diligence should be undertaken before trading. You can read all our market analysis by visiting the link for capital.com in the description. Our recent explainer on short selling might interest you too. You can watch that by clicking on the box. And don't forget to subscribe to stay alerted to our regular chart analysis videos each week and other explainers on the big financial topics of the day.